In the year 2250, humanity ventured beyond the familiar confines of the solar system, their eyes set on the vast, uncharted realms of space. This era marked the pinnacle of human exploration, driven by insatiable curiosity and the unyielding spirit of adventure. It was during one of these expeditions that the USS Endeavor, a vessel equipped with the latest in warp drive technology, stumbled upon a discovery that would forever alter the course of human history. The Endeavor's crew, a diverse group of scientists, engineers, and soldiers, had been mapping a previously unexplored sector when their sensors picked up an anomaly. It was an artificial structure, massive in scale, orbiting a nearby star. As they approached, the structure came alive with light and energy, revealing its true nature, a starship unlike anything humanity had encountered before. Initial attempts at communication were met with silence. The crew of the Endeavor prepared for the worst, their hands ready at their stations, their minds racing with the possibilities of what might come next. Then, without warning, the alien vessel initiated contact. The first communication was a complex series of audiovisual signals that took the Endeavor's AI minutes to decipher. The message was simple yet profound. Greetings, travelers. We are the Threxians. Do you come in peace? The ensuing dialogue was cautious but filled with a sense of wonder and mutual curiosity. The Threxians, as it turned out, were explorers much like the humans, beings of intellect and reason, seeking to understand the cosmos and its myriad inhabitants. Over the next few weeks, both species shared knowledge about their cultures, technologies, and histories. The Threxians were a highly advanced civilization, with technologies that seemed like magic to human eyes. They spoke of a vast galactic community, of which humanity was now on the threshold of becoming a part. But as the relationship between the two species deepened, so did the complexity of their interactions. Differences in ideology and philosophy began to surface, leading to tensions that neither side had anticipated. Humanity's history of conflict and war was a concept the Threxians found difficult to understand, their own civilization having long ago transcended such primitive behaviors. The breaking point came during a diplomatic mission on Earth. A misunderstanding, fueled by cultural differences and mistrust, led to a tragic incident that resulted in the loss of Threxian and human lives. The event was broadcasted across the globe, igniting fear and outrage among the human population. The Threxians, viewing the incident as a deliberate act of aggression, made a decision that shocked humanity to its core. In a solemn message, they declared war, stating that humanity's propensity for violence could not be tolerated. As the Threxian fleet mobilized for an attack on Earth, the people of Earth faced a stark reality. The stars, once symbols of hope and dreams, now bore the specter of war. Humanity found itself standing on the precipice of an interstellar conflict, unprepared for the wrath of a civilization whose powers they had barely begun to comprehend. Yet, in the face of this unprecedented challenge, a spark ignited within the human spirit. With survival at stake, the nations of Earth unified like never before. The entire planet mobilized for war, not out of a desire for conquest, but for the defense of their home and the preservation of their species. The stage was set for a conflict that would test humanity's resolve, ingenuity, and willingness to endure. Little did the Threxians know, they had awakened a species refined by millennia of conflict, a species that would not go quietly into the night. The art of war was about to be redefined, and the galaxy would never be the same. The declaration of war by the Threxians sent a shockwave through the human population. The reality of facing a technologically superior alien race in battle was daunting. However, the threat to their existence ignited a fire within humanity, a burning resolve to survive and protect their home at any cost. Across the globe, governments and private entities rallied, pooling their resources, technology, and intellect to mount a defense. In record time, the Earth Defense Coalition, EDC, was formed, a unified command structure that brought together the best military minds from around the world. The EDC's first order of business was to assess the Threxian threat and adapt human technology to counter it. The challenge was monumental, but necessity fueled innovation. Scientists and engineers worked around the clock, developing new weapon systems, enhancing spacecraft capabilities, and reverse engineering captured Threxian technology. One of the most significant advancements was in the field of propulsion technology. Building on the principles of the warp drive, Human engineers developed a new class of faster-than-light ships capable of rapid deployment across the solar system. 
These vessels were equipped with advanced armor plating, energy shields, and a variety of weapon systems designed to penetrate Threxian defenses. On the ground, the focus was on preparing the soldiers for what lay ahead. Traditional combat training was overhauled to include tactics and strategies for fighting a technologically superior enemy. Special units were formed, comprising soldiers with unique skills suited for unconventional warfare. These included cyber warriors adept at hacking into alien systems and commandos trained in zero-gravity combat. The mobilization extended beyond the military. Civilians contributed to the war effort in various ways, from working in factories that now produced war materials, to volunteering for civil defense. The spirit of unity and determination was palpable, with people from all walks of life coming together to face the common threat. Propaganda played a crucial role in maintaining morale. The EDC launched a comprehensive media campaign, highlighting human achievements and the valor of those preparing to fight. Stories of bravery and sacrifice became the norm, broadcasted daily to remind everyone what they were fighting for. As the EDC's preparations progressed, the first Threxian ships entered the solar system, their arrival marked by a series of probing attacks. These skirmishes served as the first real test of humanity's readiness. The human forces, though still underprepared, managed to hold their own, employing guerrilla tactics and leveraging their home field advantage. The initial engagements were costly but invaluable. They provided the EDC with much-needed combat experience and insight into the Threxians' capabilities and tactics. Each encounter was meticulously analyzed, with lessons learned quickly integrated into training and strategy. Meanwhile, deep within a secret facility, humanity's most daring plan was taking shape. Codenamed Project Prometheus, it aimed to develop a weapon capable of turning the tide of the war. The project was the embodiment of human ingenuity and desperation, a gamble that, if successful, could end the Threxian threat once and for all. As ships were readied and soldiers took up arms, a sense of quiet determination settled over the planet. Humanity stood at the brink, facing an uncertain future. Yet, in this moment of crisis, they found unity and purpose. The stage was set for a confrontation that would test the limits of human resilience and creativity. The war with the Threxians was not just a battle for survival. It was a battle for the very soul of humanity. The first major battle of the war erupted over Europa, one of Jupiter's moons and a key strategic outpost for humanity. Its vast underground oceans, hidden beneath a thick crust of ice, were home to research facilities and military bases pivotal to the Earth Defense Coalition's EDC strategy. The Threxians, recognizing its importance, aimed to deliver a crippling blow to human morale and capabilities. The initial Threxian assault was devastating. A fleet of sleek, angular ships emerged from warp space, their advanced weapon systems lighting up the dark expanse of space with lethal precision. The human defenders, caught off guard by the suddenness and ferocity of the attack, scrambled to respond. Europa's orbital defense platforms managed to repel the first wave, but it was clear they wouldn't withstand a sustained assault. Commander Elena Zhao, appointed head of Europa's defense, quickly adapted to the unfolding chaos. Understanding the conventional tactics would lead to a swift defeat, she ordered the evacuation of non-essential personnel and initiated a guerrilla warfare strategy. Small, agile human fighters began hit-and-run attacks on the Threxian fleet, exploiting the moon's magnetic field and icy plumes to mask their movements. On the surface, the situation was dire. The Threxians had deployed ground troops, a mix of mechanized units and infantry, to capture the moon's key facilities. They advanced with clinical efficiency their movements precise, leaving little room for the human defenders to exploit. However, the humans had an ace up their sleeve. The extensive network of underground tunnels and caverns beneath Europa's icy crust became the battleground. Human soldiers, wearing specialized exosuits designed for the extreme conditions, engaged the Threxians in a deadly game of cat and mouse. The icy corridors echoed with the sounds of gunfire and the roar of ice cracking under the strain of combat. Zhao, understanding the psychological impact of the battle, launched a series of bold counterattacks. In one daring move, a human strike team infiltrated a Threxian command ship and set it ablaze from within, sending it crashing into Europa's surface. The explosion was a beacon of hope, a signal to the defenders that victory was possible. The battle raged for weeks, with neither side gaining a decisive advantage. The Threxians were unaccustomed to the guerrilla tactics employed by the humans, their numerical and technological superiority blunted by the defenders' cunning and knowledge of the terrain. 
In the end, it was the harsh environment of Europa itself that turned the tide. A massive Threxian ground force, trapped in a labyrinth of tunnels, was decimated when a series of controlled explosions triggered a collapse, burying the invaders under tons of ice. The siege of Europa became a turning point in the war. The Threxians, shocked by the ferocity and resilience of the human defenders, were forced to reconsider their approach. For humanity, it was a hard-fought victory that proved their capacity to stand against a superior foe. It bolstered morale across the solar system, a testament to human ingenuity, bravery, and the willingness to fight for their home. The battle left Europa scarred, its surface marred by craters and the remnants of fallen ships, a solemn reminder of the cost of war. Yet, beneath the ice, life went on. The research facilities and military bases, though battered, remained operational. The defenders of Europa, their ranks thinned but spirits unbroken, prepared for the next phase of the conflict, knowing well that the war was far from over. After the siege of Europa, humanity's morale was at an all-time high. The Earth Defense Coalition, EDC, had proven that victory against the Threxians was possible, inspiring a new wave of determination across human forces. Leveraging this momentum, the EDC launched an ambitious counteroffensive aimed at the Threxian stronghold in the asteroid belt. This region, rich in resources, had been quickly seized by the Threxians early in the war, using it as a forward operating base for attacks on human territories. The plan for the Battle of the Asteroid Belt was audacious. It involved using the asteroids themselves as weapons, a strategy that turned the belt's treacherous environment into an advantage. Squadrons of pilots, dubbed Asteroid Cowboys, were tasked with the dangerous mission of planting propulsion units on large asteroids, effectively turning them into massive kinetic projectiles. Lieutenant Jamal Edwards, a skilled pilot known for his unconventional tactics, led the operation. Under his command, the Asteroid Cowboys executed a series of high-speed maneuvers through the belt, evading Threxian patrols and defense systems to reach their targets. The propulsion units, once activated, would send the asteroids hurtling towards the Threxian fleet and installations at devastating speeds. Meanwhile, the main human fleet, consisting of newly commissioned warships equipped with the latest in energy shielding and armament technology, took up positions at the edge of the belt. Their task was to engage the Threxian forces, drawing their attention away from the incoming asteroid projectiles. As the operation commenced, the Threxians, confident in their superiority, launched a frontal assault on the human fleet. The initial clash was fierce, with both sides suffering losses. However, the humans' new defensive technologies proved effective, absorbing much of the Threxian firepower and allowing them to maintain their defensive line. Then, with the Threxians fully engaged, the asteroids, now on a collision course with the enemy fleet, made their impact. The first asteroid struck a Threxian dreadnought, its massive bulk smashing through the ship's shields and hull with ease, causing a chain reaction of explosions. More asteroids followed, each impact sowing chaos and destruction among the Threxian ranks. The asteroid belt, once a symbol of Threxian dominance, had become a deadly trap. Caught off guard by the ferocity and ingenuity of the human attack, the Threxian fleet descended into disarray. Capitalizing on the confusion, the human fleet pressed their advantage. Starfighters, led by Edwards, darted through the enemy lines, targeting key ships and installations. The battle turned in humanity's favor. The Threxians retreating in disarray, their stronghold in the asteroid belt shattered. The Battle of the Asteroid Belt was a turning point in the war. It demonstrated humanity's ability to adapt and innovate in the face of a superior enemy. The victory was not just strategic, but symbolic, shattering the myth of Threxian invincibility and proving that human ingenuity and courage could turn the tide of the conflict. In the aftermath, the EDC secured the asteroid belt, establishing forward bases and beginning the process of mining resources to fuel the war effort. The victory served as a beacon of hope across human territories, a reminder that no matter the odds, humanity would fight, adapt, and overcome. As the dust settled and the celebrations began, Edwards and his asteroid cowboys became heroes of the war, their daring tactics celebrated in stories and songs. But beyond the celebrations, there was a renewed sense of determination. Humanity had faced down the abyss and emerged victorious. The war was far from over, but for the first time since the conflict began, there was a sense that victory was within reach. In the wake of their victory in the asteroid belt, humanity was emboldened. However, the Earth Defense Coalition, EDC, understood that to maintain momentum and keep the Threxians on the defensive, they needed to strike at the heart of the enemy's territory. 
Thus, Operation Phantom Strike was born, a series of covert missions aimed at infiltrating Threxian-held worlds to conduct sabotage, gather intelligence, and sow discord among their ranks. Captain Maya Sato led one of the elite teams chosen for this perilous task. A seasoned veteran, she was renowned for her strategic mind and ability to remain undetected behind enemy lines. Her team, a diverse group of specialists handpicked for their skills in espionage, hacking, and combat, was tasked with infiltrating a Threxian command center located on a remote planet. The journey to the Threxian world was fraught with danger. Navigating through enemy space required stealth and precision, with the team's ship mimicking the signatures of common Threxian transport vessels. Upon arrival, they found a world vastly different from Earth. Crimson skies, towering metal structures, and an atmosphere heavy with the scent of ozone. Utilizing cloaking devices and advanced hacking tools, Sato and her team made their way to the command center. Their objective was clear. Disrupt the Threxian communication networks, steal critical data, and, if possible, disable the planet's defense grid. The stakes were high. Failure would not only cost them their lives, but also jeopardize the entire war effort. Inside the command center, they encountered a series of challenges, from bypassing security protocols to navigating the alien technology. With each step, they delved deeper into the heart of the enemy's operations, uncovering plans that revealed the scale and ambition of the Threxian war effort. It was clear that the Threxians were preparing for a massive offensive, one that could potentially turn the tide of the war back in their favor. Working against time, Sato's team managed to implant a series of viruses into the Threxian network designed to disrupt communications and misdirect their forces. Additionally, they succeeded in stealing a trove of data, including detailed star maps and strategic plans. The mission reached its climax when the team discovered a way to temporarily disable the planet's defense grid. Seizing the opportunity, they transmitted the deactivation codes to the EDC fleet, which launched a surprise attack. In the ensuing chaos, Sato and her team made their escape, leaving the planet in disarray. The impact of Operation Phantom Strike was profound. The sabotage of the Threxian command center caused widespread confusion and delay in their war efforts. The stolen data provided the EDC with invaluable intelligence, revealing weaknesses in the Threxian defenses and plans for future operations. Captain Sato and her team returned as heroes, their mission behind enemy lines a testament to the courage and ingenuity of humanity. Their success not only dealt a significant blow to the Threxian war machine, but also demonstrated the effectiveness of unconventional warfare. The Threxians, once viewed as an unstoppable force, were now shown to be vulnerable. The victory bolstered the morale of human forces across the galaxy. Stories of the daring raid spread quickly, inspiring soldiers and civilians alike. Humanity had once again proven its resilience, and the message was clear. Even in the darkest hours, there was hope. The war was far from over, but the actions of Sato and her team had opened a new front, one where cunning and courage could overcome brute force and technology. The success of Operation Phantom Strike marked a pivotal moment in the war against the Threxians. Humanity's audacious tactics and relentless spirit began to erode the once unassailable confidence of the Threxian command. Across human-occupied territories, the tide of war slowly started to turn. The EDC, capitalizing on the momentum, initiated a series of offensives across multiple fronts, each designed to reclaim lost ground and further weaken the Threxian grip on the galaxy. Admiral Lucas Grant, the architect behind many of the EDC's strategies, spearheaded the largest of these offensives, targeting a cluster of planets that served as key Threxian supply routes. Using the intelligence gathered by Captain Sato's team, Grant devised a multi-pronged attack that combined fleet actions with precision strikes and ground invasions. The operation commenced with a feint, drawing Threxian forces to a decoy target. Meanwhile, a coalition of human fleets, leveraging advanced cloaking technology and the new propulsion systems developed from the asteroid belt victory, bypassed Threxian defenses, striking at the heart of their supply chain. The surprise was complete. The Threxians, unprepared for the ferocity and scale of the attack, scrambled to respond. On the ground, EDC forces, now better equipped and trained for combat against the Threxians, engaged the enemy with renewed vigor. Each battle was hard fought, but the humans' intimate knowledge of Threxian tactics, gleaned from countless skirmishes and the invaluable data stolen during Operation Phantom Strike, gave them an edge. Guerrilla tactics, 
Cyber warfare and the use of environmental hazards to their advantage allowed human forces to liberate several key planets, each victory boosting morale and further galvanizing the EDC's resolve. One of the most significant battles occurred on the planet of Virena. A Thraxian stronghold, Virena's fall represented not only a strategic victory, but also a symbolic one. The planet had been among the first to fall during the Thraxian advance, its capture demoralizing humanity. Its liberation was a clear sign that the tide of war was indeed turning. The Battle of Verena was emblematic of the changing fortunes of the war. EDC forces, employing a mix of ground assaults and orbital bombardments, broke through the planet's defenses. The Threxians, despite their technological superiority, found themselves outmaneuvered and outwitted at every turn. The liberation of Verena, broadcast across human territories, became a rallying cry a testament to what could be achieved against seemingly insurmountable odds. As the EDC continued its push, reclaiming territories and degrading Threxian capabilities, a new dynamic emerged on the battlefield. The Threxians, long accustomed to dictating the pace and nature of the conflict, were now on the defensive. Their responses became increasingly erratic, their tactics more desperate. The myth of Threxian invincibility, once a shadow hanging over humanity, was shattered. In the corridors of power, both on Earth and among the Threxian hierarchy, the realization that the war could be won, or lost, began to take hold. For the Threxians, the continued resilience and ingenuity of humanity posed a question they had never needed to consider. What would it mean to face defeat? The turning of the tide was not just a shift in the strategic balance of the war, but a transformation in the spirit of those fighting it. Humanity, once fighting for survival, now fought with the belief that victory was within their grasp. Each battle, each skirmish, brought them closer to reclaiming their place in the galaxy, not just as survivors, but as equals among the stars. The war was far from over, but the victories won and the sacrifices made had imbued humanity with a sense of purpose and determination. The path ahead was fraught with challenges, but for the first time, the light of hope shone brightly, guiding the way forward. With the tide of war turning in humanity's favor, the Earth Defense Coalition, EDC, set its sights on a bold and ambitious objective, a direct assault on Threxia, the heart of the enemy's empire. This decision was not made lightly. Threxia was a fortress world, surrounded by layers of defenses and a fleet that had been thought invincible. However, the victories and advancements made by human forces had shifted the balance. Intelligence gathered indicated vulnerabilities in Threxia's defenses windows of opportunity that, if exploited, could bring the war to a decisive end. General Ava Torres was chosen to lead the assault. Known for her strategic acumen and fearless leadership, Torres was a symbol of human resilience. Under her command was an assembled fleet of the EDC's finest warships, alongside special forces units prepared for ground operations. The plan was complex, requiring precise coordination and timing. The fleet would breach Threxia's outer defenses using a combination of stealth, electronic warfare, and brute force, creating a path for ground forces to infiltrate the planet and strike at key military and infrastructure targets. As the fleet approached Threxia, the tension among the crew was palpable. The scale of the operation was unlike anything attempted before. The initial phase was a testament to human ingenuity. Cloaked vessels, carrying elite hacking teams, disabled Threxia's early warning systems, allowing the main fleet to close in undetected. When Threxia's defenses finally reacted, it was too late to organize an effective counter. The battle that ensued was chaotic and fierce. The space around Threxia became a maelstrom of fire and destruction. Human ships, many bearing the scars of previous battles, engaged Threxian defenders with a ferocity born of desperation and hope. Meanwhile, specialized units launched from carriers in the fleet made landfall, using the confusion above to penetrate deep into Threxian territory. On the ground, the fighting was intense. Threxian forces, caught off guard but far from defenseless, mounted a formidable resistance. Urban centers and strategic installations became battlegrounds, with both sides suffering heavy casualties. Despite the adversity, Torres's forces pushed forward, their objectives clear, disrupt Threxian command and control, sabotage their war machine, and, if possible, capture or eliminate their leadership. Amidst the chaos, a pivotal moment came when a human commando team, led by Captain Maya Sato, managed to infiltrate a key command complex. Inside, they engaged in a fierce battle with Threxian elite guards, 
a testament to the courage and determination of humanity's finest. Their success in capturing the complex and securing vital intelligence would later be hailed as one of the turning points of the assault. As the battle raged on, it became clear that the assault on Threxia was more than a military operation. It was a statement of humanity's refusal to be subjugated. The EDC's forces fought not just for victory, but for the future of their species. The resilience and bravery displayed by Torres and her forces inspired countless others across human territories, solidifying the resolve to see the war through to its end. In the end, the assault on Threxia did not bring the immediate collapse of the Threxian Empire, but it marked the beginning of its downfall. The damage to its infrastructure, the loss of key military assets, and the blow to its morale were irrevocable. The message was clear. Humanity was a force to be reckoned with, capable of challenging the Threxians in their own stronghold. The battle for Threxia would be remembered as one of the most audacious and daring operations in the history of human warfare. It showcased the indomitable spirit of humanity, their capacity for courage, and their relentless pursuit of freedom. The heart of Threxia had been breached, and with it, the belief in Threxian invincibility was shattered. The war was far from over, but the path to victory had been laid bare. The aftermath of the assault on Threxia sent shockwaves through the galaxy. The once impregnable bastion of Threxian power had been shaken to its core, signaling a shift in the war's dynamics that few could have predicted. In response, the Threxians rallied for what would be known as the Final Stand, a desperate attempt to turn the tide against the advancing forces of humanity. As the Earth Defense Coalition, EDC, pushed forward, reclaiming territories and liberating worlds once under Threxian dominion, the Threxians retreated to a strategic stronghold located in the shadow of a dying star. This location, known as the Nexus, was the site of the Threxians' last operational superweapon, capable of devastating entire fleets. The final stand would not only determine the outcome of the war, but the fate of both species. Admiral Lucas Grant, who had orchestrated many of the EDC's victories, was tasked with leading the assault on the Nexus. Understanding the stakes, Grant assembled a diverse coalition force, comprising the best of the human military, alongside units from worlds that had suffered under Threxian rule. This alliance, forged in the fires of war, was a testament to humanity's ability to unite disparate factions against a common enemy. The battle for the Nexus was unlike any before. The Threxians, fighting with the ferocity of those with nothing left to lose, unleashed the full might of their superweapon. Waves of energy tore through space, obliterating ships and leaving destruction in their wake. However, the EDC had anticipated this, deploying experimental technology that provided their fleet with a measure of protection, albeit not without cost. In the thick of battle, Captain Maya Sato led a daring mission to infiltrate the Nexus and disable the superweapon. Accompanied by a squad of elite soldiers, Sato fought her way through the stronghold, a maze of corridors and chambers that tested the limits of her team's resolve and combat prowess. The mission, fraught with danger at every turn, symbolized the tenacity and courage that had come to define humanity's stand against the Threxians. Meanwhile, in space, a fierce dogfight unfolded as pilots navigated through debris and energy blasts, targeting key Threxian installations on the Nexus. Each successful strike brought them closer to victory, but the cost was high, with many not surviving the assault. The turning point came when Sato and her team, against all odds, managed to disable the superweapon. The moment the behemoth fell silent, the dynamic of the battle shifted irreversibly in favor of the EDC. Sensing their advantage, Grant ordered a full-scale offensive, pushing the Threxians back with renewed vigor. The final stand was brutal and harrowing, a relentless clash of wills that saw losses on both sides. However, the courage and determination of the EDC forces, driven by the prospect of a future free from Threxian tyranny, ultimately prevailed. The Nexus fell, marking the end of the Threxians' last stronghold and their capability to wage war on a galactic scale. In the aftermath, the galaxy was left to reckon with the cost of the conflict. Worlds lay in ruin, and countless lives had been lost. However, the victory at the Nexus was a beacon of hope, a testament to what could be achieved when disparate beings united for a common cause. The Threxian leadership, faced with the reality of their defeat, sought peace. Negotiations began, leading to a ceasefire that would pave the way for a new era. The final stand would be remembered not just as the climax of a war, but as the moment when the course of galactic history was irrevocably altered. 
Humanity had emerged from the shadow of annihilation to stand victorious, their resolve unbroken. The war had revealed the depth of their courage, the strength of their unity, and the indomitable spirit that defined them. As the galaxy began to heal, the legacy of the final stand served as a reminder of the cost of freedom and the enduring power of hope. In the silence that followed the final stand, the galaxy breathed a collective sigh of relief. The war that had ravaged worlds and claimed countless lives was over. Humanity, alongside their allies, stood victorious, but the victory was bittersweet. The cost of freedom had been high, and the scars of conflict would take generations to heal. The Earth Defense Coalition, EDC, now recognized as a formidable force within the galaxy, spearheaded efforts to rebuild and restore. Planets that had been battlegrounds were slowly transformed back into homes. The EDC also took on the role of peacekeepers, ensuring that the fragile ceasefire with the Threxians evolved into a lasting peace. The negotiations with the Threxians were tense but ultimately fruitful. A treaty was signed, demarcating borders and establishing terms for disarmament and reparations. The Threxians, humbled by their defeat, acknowledged the resilience and right to exist of humanity and other species they had once sought to dominate. Amidst the rebuilding, humanity faced the task of integration. Worlds and peoples that had once known only the Threxians as oppressors were now part of a broader coalition. The EDC facilitated dialogues and exchanges, fostering a sense of unity and shared purpose. The diversity of cultures and species within the coalition became its strength, a mosaic of civilizations united by common values and aspirations. War memorials were erected on Earth and other worlds, solemn reminders of the cost of peace. The names of the fallen were inscribed in stone and memory, honored not just as soldiers, but as heroes who had fought for a future they would never see. Among these, General Eva Torres, Admiral Lucas Grant, Captain Maya Sato, and countless others were remembered for their leadership and sacrifices. The scientific and technological advancements made during the war began to find new purposes in peacetime. Technologies that had once been weapons were repurposed for healing and reconstruction. The collaboration between species led to breakthroughs in medicine, energy, and space travel, laying the foundation for a renaissance of exploration and discovery. As the years passed, the galaxy began to thrive once more. Trade routes reopened, and diplomatic missions fostered friendships between former foes. The arts and sciences flourished, enriched by the exchange of ideas and perspectives. The story of the war, with all its horrors and heroism, was passed down as a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who had lived through it. The Threxians, too, embarked on a path of change. The war had forced them to confront their own hubris and the unsustainable nature of their imperial ambitions. In peace, they found a new identity, contributing to the galaxy's welfare as equals rather than conquerors. Humanity's journey from the brink of annihilation to a beacon of hope had reshaped the galaxy. The war had taught a harsh lesson about the dangers of unchecked aggression and the value of cooperation. In its wake, a new era dawned, one of potential and promise. As the galaxy moved forward, the legacy of the conflict served as both a warning and a guide. The peace that had been so hard won was cherished, safeguarded by the vigilance and unity of those who understood its price. The aftermath was not just a period of recovery, but a new beginning an opportunity to build a future defined not by conflict, but by the collective pursuit of a better shared destiny. The years following the war witnessed the blossoming of a galaxy reborn. Worlds scarred by conflict healed, as did the hearts of those who had endured the darkness. The Earth Defense Coalition, EDC, had evolved, its mission transformed from one of war to one of peace, exploration, and unity. Humanity, once on the brink of extinction, now thrived as a key member of a galactic community united by shared experiences and aspirations for a better future. The peace treaty that ended the war became the cornerstone of a new galactic order. The Threxians, integrated into the community, shared their advanced technology and knowledge, contributing to a renaissance of growth and innovation. In return, they learned from the cultures and philosophies of those they had once sought to dominate embarking on a journey of redemption and discovery. Humanity spearheaded the creation of the Galactic Council, a forum where disputes were settled through diplomacy and mutual respect. The Council facilitated cooperation on an unprecedented scale, tackling challenges such as poverty, disease, and environmental degradation. The scars of the past served as a constant reminder of the importance of peace and the value of every sentient life.
Technological advancements flourished, fueled by collaboration between species. Space travel became safer and more accessible, opening up new frontiers for exploration. Colonies on distant worlds thrived, serving as beacons of diversity and cooperation. The mysteries of the universe, once beyond reach, were now explored by joint expeditions, unraveling the wonders of the cosmos together. Cultural exchanges enriched the galaxy's social fabric. Art, music, and literature from countless worlds inspired new forms of expression, blending traditions to create something uniquely beautiful. Festivals and celebrations, shared among different species, fostered a sense of community and joy, celebrating the diversity that had once been a source of division. The legacy of those who had fought and sacrificed in the war was honored in monuments, in stories, and in the daily lives of all who enjoyed the peace they had secured. Schools taught the history of the war not to glorify conflict, but to underscore the importance of unity and the dangers of intolerance and fear. As the galaxy looked forward, the children of the post-war era grew up without the specter of conflict overshadowing their futures. They dreamt of the stars not as battlegrounds, but as destinations for adventure and discovery. The spirit of exploration, once driven by the need for survival, was now motivated by curiosity and the desire to share the wonders of the universe with newfound friends. Challenges remained, as they always do. Disagreements and tensions arose, but the Galactic Council and the principles it stood for provided the means to resolve them without resorting to violence. The scars of the galaxy's past were not forgotten, but served as lessons for creating a better future. In the end, the war that had once threatened to extinguish the light of countless civilizations instead ignited a flame of hope and unity. Humanity and the Threxians, once mortal enemies, now stood together as architects of a new era marked by peace, prosperity, and mutual respect. The galaxy, once divided by fear and hatred, was now united by the bonds of friendship and a shared vision for the future. This new era was not free from challenges, but the foundation laid by those who had lived through the darkness ensured that future generations would meet them with the wisdom of the past. The galaxy moved forward, not as a collection of disparate peoples and worlds, but as a united community, bound by the belief that together, they could face any challenge and create a future filled with hope and endless possibilities.